Hey, welcome everyone. So we all pretty much know that a healthy immune system begins with um, pretty much a healthy body. And it's one of the best ways, I guess, to um, avoid bacteria and viruses. So today, and I know personally myself, when I get stressed out and um, I get overwhelmed or I'm not actually nourishing myself well, I tend you know, to pick up things a lot easier. So today we've got um, Georgia Marion, our nutritionist and naturopath and women's health specialist. And she's gonna give us some expert tips on boosting immunity. Um, you know, during, pre during pregnancy and postpartum, but also in general, this can apply to everyone. So welcome, Georgia. Thanks for having me. Um, so Georgia, you know, basically using immune support through food, um, you know, and typically most people sort of go to foods which in vitamin C and D and high mm. in antioxidants, you know, typically turmeric, ginger, um, can you tell us some of the best sources of these food and at foods, and even if these foods should be the go-to to boost immunity? Yeah, yeah, I definitely. What well, first of all, I will say that I mean, what we eat and what we don't eat will have a significant impact on how strong or weak our immune response will be and function will be. So, regarding sources of these nutrients, if you are eating largely a diet that's consisting of a wide variety of your vegetables and fruit. So eating your rainbow that we talk about with our kids will provide a broad, broad variety of these nutrients we're talking about, like your vitamin C and vitamin D and antioxidants and all sorts of other phytonutrients um, that do all sorts of great things for our immune systems. So, you know, things that are high in vitamin C. So your concentrated sources are things like your capsicum and strawberries and oranges. Other good sources are things like your watermelon, your papaya, your citrus fruits mango, vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, tomato juice and kiwi fruit. And you can also get in things like tomatoes and some potato and spinach as well. So, you know, the more of these types of things you're having, the more you're going to be getting natural sources of vitamin C. Uh, vitamin D, this can be a little bit trickier to get um, good doses in food, but things like egg yolk and fish like pink salmon and mackerel and sardines, um, but of course sunlight. Um, are the best natural is the best natural source to get, and obviously safely. And our oh, antioxidants and phytonutrients. This is where your fruits and vegetables definitely come into it. So the more colour that you are consuming in a in a meal and over a day and over a week, the more of the antioxidant variety you're going to get. And so it also be eating just in general of different types of substances in these foods that support your immunity, things like all your leafy greens, like your kale and your spinach and your silver beet and bok choy and cabbage and that sort of thing. Um, mushrooms, like, you know, some of your funky mushrooms that you can get these days, like shiitake, like you can get them fresh or dried. <clears throat> um, and things like garlic and ginger you've mentioned and turmeric are also great to be adding to cooking or if you want them raw. So, um, and, um, and also onion, things like that. Mm. But also want to touch on it's important to minimise the intake of foods that can make it harder for your immune system to function well. So the three things I particularly mention here are sugar, because mm. too much sugar will weaken your immune response and it can happen for a number of hours after you eat a, a reasonable dose of it. Um, and it can increase infection time. So because it inhibits something called phagocytosis, which is essentially where certain cells in your immune system chew up viruses for want of a better word and spit them out so to speak or get rid of them and bacteria um, and to do with sugar there's the obvious things we all know about like ice cream and wet sweet biscuits and all those types of things but probably more importantly looking for sugar that's added to things that you wouldn't normally expect it to be in so sauces crackers essentially any types of tin foods that sort of stuff because mm. it's a i think it's that probably more that tends to add to people's sugar intake that they wouldn't be necessarily aware of so um, alcohol depending on obviously where you're at pregnancy or not um, but in general and processed foods and chemicals and additives so that's I guess the gist of it as far as what I'd be looking for with the mm. sort of things you're talking about those nutrients are important but don't just focus on foods that have those nutrients it's the overall rainbow so to speak that you yeah. really want to be focused on mm. so thinking of that rainbow and, and again trying to avoid sugar mm. what what are some of the um your your simple go-to recipes you know basically with stuff that most people might even have you know now in the cupboard yeah i guess i try and go keep things <clears throat> like anyone that's got a busy life and that has kids that 
the more you got already there, the easier it's going to be to eat in a way that supports your immune system. So say for breakfast, things that I often recommend to people or have myself is things like poached fruit that's ready to go in the fridge, whether it's apples or berries or whatever your preference is, stone fruits if it's the season for it, homemade muesli, and you can have whatever mix of combination you like in there. Um, like I usually do a pumped up version of LSA, so linseeds, sunflower seeds and almonds, but depending on what sort of nuts and seeds you have, I'll often add in some Brazil nuts and um, pumpkin seeds as well and a bit of coconut mix. You can add that to smoothies or sprinkling it on um, your fruit or whatever, or yogurt, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, coconut milk and kefir, um, frozen berries, but any sort of smoothies if you like them. Um, and protein, obviously, whether it's <coughs> for having protein on hand, <coughs> excuse me, or um, smoothies or anything you're adding to yogurt, that sort of thing. Um, things that are handy to have uh, as far as recipes or things that are handy to have for lunch type things, if you're someone that bakes um, vegetable bread that you like, the savoury muffins in the freezer, um, portions of protein in the freezer that mm. you like, like um, chicken or slow cooked meat or mince, that sort of thing vegetables that you've roasted up and you can have it in the fridge um, um, to add to things or have them on their own. Um, having roasted nuts and seeds are ready to go so you can stack on those pretty easily. Um, and vegetable based dips again depending on what your preference for um, dips are. So the other things I would tend to have on hand um, is bone broth whether you want to make a big batch of it um, and it can be you can store it in say leftover bottles that you have. Um, keep, keep those but also it's handy to have you know, those silicon trays of, um, mm. like the large silicon trays, I often put, put cubes of it in there for when you're putting smaller amounts, like in your kids' meals or if you're having a smaller portion, that sort of stuff. So that's the sort of thing I would say probably would be a good starting point to have on hand, um, yeah, to help, help with eating that rainbow and the different types of macronutrients you want. Yeah, Georgia, I must say, Georgia designed all the recipes, the meal plans and the shopping list in um, my online pregnancy program. And she has some incredible ideas there and really simple stuff that, um, you know, you can to boost your immunity and also to ensure you're getting, you know, you know, the enough nutrients as you journey through pregnancy and postpartum. So thanks for those ideas, Georgia. Um, now, I wanted to also ask because... It definitely to boost immunity, as we've already touched on, is vitamin C tends to be mm. you know, the go-to. And I guess you hear about it a lot in the media for immune support. Yes. But actually, what is vitamin C and why, what does it actually do and why is it so important? Yeah, okay. So with vitamin C, it's also known as ascorbic acid. And it's essentially, it's a water-soluble vitamin. And unlike most animals, we don't have the enzyme to make it. So we have to eat it regularly. And it has lots of different roles in the body. Um, so acting as a cofactor for enzymes, which basically means it helps lots of different reactions occur. Um, as an antioxidant, um, it's one of the main water-soluble non-enzyme antioxidants in plasma and tissue, which essentially means it protects your different types of body tissues from free radical damage that occurs just as a normal part of your body functioning, including how the immune cells work. Um, it helps make lots of things like collagen and carnitine and stress hormones and it also increases the bioavailability of um, iron from vegetarian sources. But particularly to do with immunity, it stimulates the synthesis and function of lots of different types of immune cells which are called white blood cells and there's lots of different types. So it helps with these cells be able to move if you like. Um, and phagocytosis that we talked about before, which is where certain white blood cells will digest invading microorganisms. So the net result of that, it helps with the processes that can help kill pathogens. But also its antioxidant function is relevant here as well because it protects another type of immune cell called leukocytes from self-inflicted oxidative damage because when you have micro microorganisms that have invaded the body, as a normal part of fighting these, the leukocytes release toxins to kill the pathogen and in the process, they can actually damage themselves. So it helps with those leukocytes being able to uh, have less oxidative damage to them and therefore be able to function effectively with what they're supposed to do. Um, so I guess the net result of all of these different types of actions is it has immune supporting, immune stimulating effect in the body. And do you think, I mean, is I guess a lot of women are often concerned during mm. pregnancy about what supplements they can take or should they just be looking at vitamin C. I guess I know you probably can't give a specific 
everyone's so different and probably need to be tested yeah. for it. But, you know, is it good as a primary thing to try and get your vitamin C mainly from food sources? Um, or Yeah, taking... I'd say whether you... I was going to say, whether you're talking about um, vitamin C or any of the other nutrients we're talking about, I think the first point definitely has to be making sure you're eating a diet that has a lot of these things in it for the most part. Because if you are eating a diet that doesn't support your immunity, like the things we spoke about to start with, supplements are going to be less effective because they're called supplements for a reason. They're designed to supplement your diet, not replace it. Mm. And so they're going to be able to support the functions in your body better if there's already a basis of macro and micronutrients that's provided from your diet that helps these micronutrients that you usually get from supplements working. They can be, having said that, they can be helpful in certain situations, but I would, I would be cautious about people self-diagnosing or self-prescribing because you can mm. waste a lot of money not taking the right things for your specific situation because we're talking about immunity today. There can be lots of different factors that contribute to people's immunity that might vary between individuals or oh, you might not be taking the right dose or for the right amount of time so you want to be going to a good good health food store or pharmacy or see someone um, that knows about it for support if there's particular issues you're needing information on but generally speaking if I was thinking about supplements I'd be talking about things like probiotics vitamin c in certain situations at the right dose um, zinc vitamin d and certain types of herbs obviously that herbs um, you have to be very careful during pregnancy with that sort of thing. So, so I think um, they can be helpful, but they wouldn't be my first point of call as a general maintenance. If you're, I would be focusing on your diet first and then seeing where the gaps are from there, depending yeah, on your situation. Right. And and on that note too, I, I guess um, we all pretty <coughs> much know that um, immunity is often related to gut health. So. Can you talk mm -hmm. a bit more about how that relates as well to diet and, you know, basically yes. boosting wow. your immunity this is a or maintaining huge topic. Your this is such a huge yeah. topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could talk about this for hours and hours and people do, but I'll keep it really short. So mm. uh, and essentially when we're talking about gut health, we're largely talking about, I guess, a couple of different things. The intestinal microbiome, which is probably a word a lot of people are hearing about, um, and that's basically the bacteria and the viruses and fungi that live in your gut. Well, they live all over your body, but essentially we're talking about the gut here. And it has a significant effect on your immune system development when you're, when you're young and also function. Uh, if you consider it, it's like one of the first lines of defense against pathogens that enter your body. And it, so different things it does here, it helps to prepare and train our immune system on how to respond to pathogens. So we don't, under respond or we don't over respond and both of those can be an issue um something called colonization resistance which is basically where it competes with pathogenic bacteria in the gut for adhesion sites or being able to latch on if you like and nutrients uh releasing toxic molecules these are all things that your microbiome does releasing toxic uh, molecules to counteract this mm. uh, colonization of your pathogenic bacteria it helps um, stimulate certain, certain signaling processes that helps with the development of your immune cell populations. Uh, it promotes your intestinal antiviral immunity by releasing certain antiviral substances. It helps with maintaining, they help with maintaining the lining of your gut. So you can imagine if you've got little gaps in your gut that are bigger than they're supposed to be, that can mean that pathogens can invade a little bit easier than they otherwise would be. Um, they produce something called short chain fatty acids, which helps your immune cells basically mount in a response and reduce gut inflammation. Um, and they essentially just help with stimulating and regulating your immune response. So all really, um, important things to do with how your immune system can respond and it's interesting because when our gut is out of balance if you consider it that the gut microbiome loses this anti-infectious barrier potency meaning that we can we are more likely to catch what's going around mm. essentially <clears throat> so and there's a clear correlation between the composition of our microbiome or what it's made up of whether you're so-called good and bad bacteria and the risk of infectious diseases Mm -hmm. So I think that's a pretty good reason to be looking at our gut health. And dietary intake can trigger changes in your microbiome pretty quickly and both ways. So if you, if you, if you shift to a high-sugar, high-fat diet, um, you know, within 24 to 48 hours, you're seeing changes in the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And it can go the other way as well. If you're eating more of your whole food-based kind of eating way that we're talking about here, 
you can see changes pretty quickly. And we probably all know this inherently as well. If we've been on holidays and we're eating a whole bunch of food we don't normally eat, we can all notice the difference with how our gut feels, with mm. the bloated and our bowel movements and that sort of thing. So we all know this intuitively. But yeah, the research is, is pointing to that as well. And does, so, does stress also affect you know your gut health as well? Is that directly yeah, related? Yeah, definitely it does. Sure, yeah. I mean, stress has an, an effect on a lot of your immune system <laughs> mm. um, and your body in general, but it, it, stress can um, have an effect. There's quite a lot of um, hormonal interactions that, that can result in, in things not working as well um, as they should with your immune system, including um, your, your, the lining of your gut as well. Mm. Like what we were talking about before, it can have an influence on that. Um, it can have influence on your microbiome, all those sort of things. So um, yeah, and also how well your, your um, immune cells can actually respond to. So mm. yeah, yeah, really. Um, and I'm just, you know, I know you touched on it earlier that particularly mm. helping to boost your immunity and particularly during pregnancy and postpartum, the role that protein mm. plays. Um, yeah. Can you expand a bit more on that? Yeah, so protein, it plays an important role in the body for lots of different things, including your immune defences. And unlike fat and, to a degree, carbohydrates, the body doesn't have storage forms in that we have protein in our body, but it's all doing something. So it's in our muscles or it's involved in immune, um, sorry, it's involved in lots of enzyme reactions. So <clears throat> it's all things that you don't want to be taking protein away from those roles because otherwise your body is going to suffer in one way or another. So we need to be having protein regularly um, and protein delivers little building blocks called amino acids, which is what the body uses. So particularly when we're talking about pregnancy and postpartum, one of the important things, I know you talk about this a lot, that protein does is helping with the building and repair of body tissues um, because during pregnancy and postpartum, your body is breaking down more protein than what it is making from these amino acids. So having regular amounts is important to help support this process. Um, to do with immunity, it basically, the body uses protein to build new immune cells and something called antibodies, um, which helps the body fight these viral and bacterial infections. So just to touch on antibodies, what this, what this means, so when pathogens enter our body, the body produces these antibodies, which basically marks these pathogens that they need to be eliminated. So without them, it's a bit like having a whole bunch of teenagers in the house drinking alcohol, right? It means these bacteria and viruses can just go crazy and cause a whole lot of damage to your house slash body for this particular disease that it's causing. So once your body produces these antibodies against a particular bacteria or virus, it will always remember how to make them. And this is what your adaptive immune system largely does. Mm. Um, and this helps your body respond quicker next time. So when we come across a particular virus or bacteria for the first time, that's why we tend to get sick because our body doesn't remember, doesn't know how to fight it, which is where your more general immune response, which is your um, innate immune response will be. It's a bit like a scattergun approach where it's just going to mm. employ all different types of um, mechanisms in the body to try and reduce it. Um, and next time it'll be more your adaptive response that comes about to, um, to help knock it on the head, so to speak. Mm. Mm, really interesting. I guess on that note too, because I know for a lot of pregnant women, I talk about this a lot, you know, the thought of, you know, if you're nauseous or you're sick um, mm -hmm. or tired even, the thought of eating a steak to get your protein. Mm -hmm. is, and I know I was like that. So on that yeah. note, supplements, whether that be protein supplements or other yep. vitamin supplements that we touched on, um, mm. what, what sort of, how would people sort of approach that? Cause I know, um, you know, it's not just, you know, walking into your local pharmacy and grabbing what you think you need, as you sort of mentioned before, it needs to be, there needs to be a few other things considered. To do with protein or supplements Pro uh, in general? Kind of both. Maybe we'll start with protein and then other sources of protein other than meat and mm. um, moving into the best you know a little bit more yeah okay supplements. yeah so if you can't tolerate if you can't tolerate meat um or you're vegetarian um so let's go with not tolerating meat red meat but you can you eat other types of meat so things like fish and bone broth we've spoken about um chicken obviously that type of thing um for anyone but also for um vegetarians obviously um vegetarian protein powders Mm -hmm. um, eggs, cheese, yogurt, nuts, nut butters, legumes and beans would be a good place to go. To do with protein powders, um, 
again, that's another really big topic. But first, I'll be looking, obviously, avoiding things that you might be intolerant to. So if you're intolerant to dairy or components in dairy, obviously, you're not going to be having your whey proteins because mm -hmm. that's what it's based on. <clears throat> so looking for proteins that suit what your particular um, needs are. Um, and if you go to a decent um, collagen, collagen protein, is that collagen, yeah, definitely yeah. not if you're vegetarian, but um, mm. but otherwise, yeah, collagen can definitely help. Um, so I guess the main thing with protein powder is um, is obviously that you're consuming one that doesn't interfere with your own particular body um, chemistry. Um, that you're having one that doesn't have a whole bunch of extra additives and sweeteners in there that, mm. that the body doesn't need. <laughs> you know, so really be looking at what else is in there beyond the protein as well. It's something you actually like the taste of, particularly when you're mm. pregnant, and also the the um, uh, the texture of it. Because some types of protein, like pea protein, is great from a um, amino acid point of view. But you know it can be a little bit, um, a little bit coarse. So some people may not be able to tolerate it. So, um, so health food stores, also um, bulk shops, can also be mm. a good source for just your plain protein because they also have um, often have quite a variety of just your plain types of protein. So they can be a really good place to go as well, um, um, or a decent decent pharmacy that has a reasonable mm. source. But I tend to find health food shops or bulk stores can be a really good place to start for those types of things. For yeah, supplements can also in general. Just Buy a little bit and see if you actually like it. And yeah, and see if you like it. You can well. try go in try yeah. a few different types. Do a little bit of research to start with before you go in. As far as because the downside, I guess, or things to be aware of with vegetarian protein powders is that they're not going to be complete sources. Which means mm -hmm. that a complete source of protein when it has all the um, all the amino acids that you need, there's usually something that's missing. Which is fine as far as because this is supplementing your diet. It's not um, hopefully your only source of protein that you're having. Um, but if you do a bit of research first and then you can go in and they'll often let you take, you can just take a little bit of it and then you can try it. And it depends on how you're eating them as well, whether you're having them in smoothies, in which case generally you're not going to taste any sort of textural or flavour sort of thing, or whether you're having them in something like water or whether you're just mm -hmm. mixing them in something where you're going to taste it. So they're all things to be considered for if you're looking at having a protein powder. So, mm. Mm. And, yeah, and we did briefly touch on um, supplements as well, which I know you specialise in being um, a naturopath as well and just mm. you know not just suddenly going out there and you know necessarily as you said there's a different quality in supplements and you know yeah there are yeah yeah and really making and sure. you want to be taking I'm a big believer and you don't want to take things that you don't need but mm. if you need to take something you want to be taking the right dose and you want to be taking the right thing that's actually specific for what is going on with you the immune system is a complicated system <clears throat> And as I touched on before, there's lots of different factors that will contribute to one person having immune issues versus another one. So how you're going to approach that, obviously these are general recommendations we're talking about today, mm. which will go a certain way to helping, helping most people with their general immunity. But if someone has specific immune issues, say like there's autoimmunity, um, you know, that's a whole other beast compared to someone that might just have getting lots of colds frequently, for example, and you're approaching them in different ways and what you're doing mm. say, um, dietary but also particularly supplemental would be quite different between those people so um, yeah so I think um, starting with your diet and then looking at where the gaps are and then getting information from trusted sources as far as what might be beneficial for you would be what I recommend yeah and that that goes for me too when you say it, even with exercise um, exercise can be a great support for immunity but you can't just sort of jump on and do you know, it's not a sort of a one-fits-all approach. Um, I mm. think different people with different levels of immunity exercise can work, you know, not well for them. If you're really depleting yourself and really, you know, using yeah, exercise, yeah. that can, you know, I know for a lot of women particularly it, it's hard to kind of shift if you have exercise a lot during pregnancy to drop down and sort of go more at a 7, seven out of 10 and a 10 out of 10 and then they wonder why they're so fatigued and then, you know, again, you see an immune you know response happen that they might pick up more colds or whatever so really keeping that in mind from an energy point of view as well um when you're exercising yeah, and even as a yeah. as a busy mom you know all that stuff that goes on you just don't want that depletion to happen whether that be through food or through the way you work out as well it all sort of is interesting. yeah i agree like with exercises as you would you would be talking to your clients a lot about this say if you're doing high intensity exercise all the time that releases one of your stress hormones and if you're if you're one of your stress hormones are elevated 
chronically, um, that's where, you know, so moderate exercise can have an immune stimulating effect, whereas your elevated high intensity exercise can actually have a depressive effect on your immune mm. system. And that's just looking at exercise, not taking into account everything else that's going on in your life. So mm. um, but I speak about a lot, you and I, definitely listening to your body um, to do with exercise, with what is where you are at your life stage and where your body's at. Don't just keep on pushing on through and doing 10, you know, high intensity classes a week if it's not working for your body in terms of, and you'll know it's not working for you in terms of immunity, that you're getting colds and flus all the time, your energy levels are really low, you know, you're not recovering well from after training sessions, all those types of things. So definitely mm. tuning in and listening. Exercise is amazing, but it needs to be at the right dose, just like supplements we were talking about yeah. before. Yeah, that's awesome, Georgia. Thank you so much. So much mm. valuable information in there, everyone. And um, Georgia, as I said, is an excellent source that we've used. She's our go-to nutritionist in my Ultimate Pregnant Core program. She's also provided us with um, lots of information that you can also grab as downloads as well. And, you know, if anyone has any questions, I will link to Georgia down below so you can reach out to her at any time. And everyone, take care. Yes, look after yourself. Thanks, Georgia.